Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. My name is Wes Wood. I am the executive director of InVets. Um, glad you could join us today. Uh, got a good agenda going forward. So give you a quick intro to what we're doing here. We'll go over some quick transition tips. Um, Blaine Zimmerman, our director of veteran engagement, is going to jump on after that, talk a little bit about Indiana, about our state, about some of the state benefits, things like that, that we have going for us here. Uh, talk a little bit about our organization, and then we will jump right into the uh, kind of spotlighted employer for this event, which is Bell Tire. So excited to talk to some of the folks over there about some of their various career opportunities. Um, so let's jump right in. So first off, like I said, my name is Wes. Uh, I'm the executive director, so I lead this organization. Um, I helped start this organization a couple years ago. I was originally an Army veteran, spent five years as an infantryman. Uh, primarily in the 101st Airborne Division down at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. I transitioned out in 2015, uh, came here to Indiana, uh, specifically to Indianapolis, um, and got got linked in with, with some, some great opportunities within local nonprofits to uh, garner some support from local industry to create this program, to really go out and break down some of those barriers between transitioning service members, military spouses, veterans, and employers across the state that are trying to connect with them. So over these past two years, we, we officially launched InVets in our first website. We have a new website that launched about two months ago, but our first website launched in January of 2018. And ever since then, um, up until March of, of this year, we've been traveling to military bases all over the country, talking to transitioning service members and trying to connect them with these jobs. And I can tell you, um, my perspective on this has changed a little bit over these past couple of years. There's a lot of things that I know now that I didn't know, but wish I had known back in 2015 when I went through through my transition. And so what I'd like to do real quick is just go over a couple of these tips. A um, couple of ground rules. We've got our, our chat open here on the side. I see some, some uh, returning faces. So welcome back, Adam. Hopefully this isn't too repetitive for you. Uh, but feel free, any of you that are attending, to jump in, ask questions uh, throughout the event. Uh, in all the various stages, we'll try and monitor this. And you may see a couple of our team members that are in the chat room as well, uh, jump on and give you a quick answer. Or if if our speakers see it, you know, we'll try and flag them and get them to answer it on, on air as well. Um, let's see, so everybody that you see here today uh, will be on LinkedIn. So I'm sure somebody will drop those links in here shortly, but feel free to reach out to us, connect with us. Uh, we want to help you through this transition process. All right, so let's jump into these quick, quick tips. So first tip uh, is be humble. So um, I know you've probably heard this uh, at some point or another throughout your, your transition, but a lot of times, um, you know, the, the military does a great job of instilling confidence. You go through a lot of that adverse conditions in the military. You prove yourself. You build a, uh, some quality skills. Um, and, it, and it tends to build up that ego. And sometimes, you know, when we get straight out of the military and go to the civilian world, we we expect all of that to carry over. And and truthfully, it can it can get us into some some trouble when we come into a civilian work environment. A lot of times, that confidence is mistaken for arrogance. Um, and so it's it's really important to be um, be cognizant of how you're coming across. Be cognizant of the fact that not everybody has experience with the military environment, with the military community, um, and there's a learning curve on all sides of this equation. Um, so humility is, is a big part. Um, the second thing is network. So you guys are doing a great, a great thing by joining in this conversation here today, but I'd encourage you again to go connect with us on LinkedIn, utilize LinkedIn um, to the most of its capabilities. There's a ton of great people on there. Uh, virtually every major organization in the country, every major corporation has at least some presence on there. And even if you're not connecting directly with HR personnel, recruiters, um, those type of people, I'd still highly recommend just reaching out to somebody uh, either at a company you're potentially interested in or just in a field or an industry uh, or a, a job title that you may be potentially interested in, um, especially if you're open. So when I got out in 2015, you know, I had been in the infantry and there is no infantry, obviously, in the civilian world. So I was I was pretty much open uh, to just about any possibility. I was, you know, I could have been talked into manufacturing, logistics, finance, you know, a number of different areas. 
Um, and I had, you know, I had some education behind me, um, but I was still open. Uh, and it was really networking and talking to individuals and just, you know, candidly asking them, you know, what do you think about your career field? Do you regret it? Do you enjoy what you do? Would you recommend that, you know, your little brother, or your son, your daughter go into this field knowing what you know now? And just ask, don't be afraid to ask those questions. Um, and I'd recommend not going into those conversations, asking for a job. You know, don't just straight up ask if there's any op opportunities, any open positions. If you go in um, with a good heart, you know, with that humility, um, being friendly and just, you know, trying to gain knowledge. If you you're much more likely to get approached for a position, you know, if they if somebody has a position on their team and they like you when they talk to you, they're going to bring it up to you. You don't necessarily have to straight up ask them about it. Um, the next point is consider the employer over the position. So a lot of companies hire from within for senior level positions, for manager positions, for some of their specialty, their, their, their salary, their individual contributor type positions. Um, you may not get the exact job you want right out of the military, but I can tell you it's much easier to move within a company most of the time, not all the time. That's why there's an asterisk there. Uh, than it is to come from the outside. So I always recommend that veterans do their research on the employer, make sure they find a good employer that has that maneuverability within the within the corporate structure and has the values, the culture that they can get behind and then really invest yourself in that company. And once you prove yourself in that first position you get, they're, they're much more likely to move you into the position you really want than if you were to come uh, you know, clean from the outside with no previous background with them. If you think about it from an employer's perspective, um, it's a big risk hiring people. You know, it's a big step into the unknown. You know, it's very hard to figure out if that person is really going to have what it takes to be successful within your organization. And a lot of times, you know, they don't have the time or the desire to to wait, you know, six months to figure out if someone's going to be successful. They want someone that's going to be successful right out of the gate. And a lot of times you get that confidence from somebody that already works in your organization. Um, so, so be, you know, be flexible. That's that next step, uh, that next tip uh, on that first job. Um, and be willing to, to, to prove yourself before you get the, the job title you really want uh, long term. Um, and that flexibility on that point, you know, one thing I, I sometimes point out to transitioning service members, if you think of somebody like Elon Musk, so obviously exceptionally smart, exceptionally innovative, very hard worker. Um, you know, has everything going for him. But to put that in a military context, if you put him in a rifle company, in an infantry battalion, you're not going to put him in charge, right? He might be the smartest, hardest working individual, but if he doesn't know how to do that task yet, he can't be in charge, right? He's going to have to start at the bottom. Now, because of all of, his, all of those other attributes, he's probably going to advance very quickly. You know, he's that work ethic, intelligence, leadership capability is going to show through. He's going to advance very quickly, but he's probably going to have to learn the task first. And, you know, it might take a year, it might take two years um, to figure it out before you can advance. But in the grand scheme of things, that's, that's honestly not very long at all. Again, I got out in 2015. That's five years ago. And in a lot of ways, it feels like it was it was just yesterday. So um, so I definitely recommend flexibility. And I recommend flexibility not only on the position, um, but also on the location. So uh, a lot of times, you know, if a veteran comes to us and says or a transitioning service member comes to us and says, hey, uh, you know, these are the broad areas that I'm interested in. This is where I did in the military. You know, I, I want a career that I can that I can have some passion for, that I can invest in. I want a company that I can feel really good about uh, and a good place to raise a family. If those are your criteria, we can help you out all day long. Uh, where we run into issues sometimes is where someone says, hey, I want to live in this specific town and I want this specific job and I want to make this specific salary. When you start to add those parameters onto it and really narrow your focus down, sometimes it's just it just flat out doesn't exist. You know, there are a lot of people that join the military from small towns. Um, and a lot of times people don't realize that there's a finite number of jobs in any given location. And so being flexible and being willing, you know, if your key priority is I want to be close to family, or I want to be within a certain amount of time of this amenity or this type of school system, that type of thing, you know, we can work around that. Uh, we can find you a community that's close. We can find you, you know, a good school system. 
Um, but having the flexibility within that criteria is really key if you want to have a smooth transition. Not to say, you know, it doesn't happen sometimes that you find the exact right fit in the exact right location, um, but it helps if you have some flexibility. Uh, and the last tip is seek help, but own your own transition. So you guys, again, are doing the right thing by, by coming here, uh, hearing from, from Bell Tire, hearing from us, you know, seeking that assistance. It's, you know, when I got out, I was going to do it all on my own, right? You know, I, I wasn't going to talk to anybody. I didn't, you know, I didn't think I needed any help. I was going to go figure it out. And now that I'm on this side of the equation, I realize that there really are a whole bunch of government programs, nonprofits, employers, all trying to help the veteran population, all trying to access them and provide assistance. And it's hard to do, you know, because a lot of people just don't want to take advantage of it. So don't be afraid to take advantage of it. There's a lot of great resources. You know, we hope to obviously be one of them that you use, but there's a lot of others that we can connect you with for various aspects of your transition or post-transition life here in Indiana. Um, but at the end of the day, it is still important that even if you take advantage of all of those resources, you still own your own transition. You still do your due diligence. You do the research on your employer, on the community you're moving into, that you put in the time and the effort to make it work. Um, it very rarely happens automatically, right? You have to put in the time and effort. Our program, Blaine's going to talk about it here in a second. Our program is set up to where, you know, we can we can provide some valuable assistance. Our, our platform, our website, provide some assistance. You know, we try and take as many barriers out of the equation as possible, but you still have to own your own transition. And honestly, um, that's what employers a lot of times are looking for. They're wanting, for, they're looking for somebody that's going to be proactive, that's going to be, um, you know, detail oriented. They're going to follow through on what they say they're going to do. Um, and that requires a significant level of commitment on your part before you even get the job. So those are just my, my quick tips right now. Again, feel free to reach out to me at any point. More than happy to answer and even any individual questions you might have after this is done. Um, in the meantime, let's kick it over to Blaine to talk about Indiana and Invest. Thanks, Wes. Uh, hey, everybody. Hope you guys are having a good week. Uh, almost made it to the end. Well, about one and a half more days and we're at the weekend. So uh, a little bit about myself. I am currently a platoon leader, a lieutenant in the Indiana National Guard. I spent six years on active duty, got out as a E5, a sergeant, um, was based in Fort Bliss, uh, went to Iraq from there and Fort Drum, went to Afghanistan from there, went from the Mexican border to the Canadian border. So couldn't have had a more diverse uh, place to live. Um, when I came out, I stayed in the Indiana Guard and went back and furthered my education and uh, got my MBA from Butler University and then went through officer candidate school and infantry basic officer leadership course and been back since uh, the spring started here at InVets in April uh, as the director of veteran engagement. So our team is myself, uh, Jerry Young and Jeremy Higgins. You'll see them in the uh, in the chat over here. I know Miranda's posting up our uh, social media profiles, our LinkedIn profiles and things like that. Feel free to jump on those pages and like them and follow us and uh, reach out to us or Chris or David on LinkedIn um, if you want more information on Bell Tire, which they'll explain a lot more about the organization here in a few minutes. So I wanna take a few minutes here and not very long because I wanna make sure that we give as much time to Chris and David as possible to talk about what our mission is here at InVets and why Indiana is a beneficial place to move for veterans. So, uh, so as Wes said, we started in 2018. We are a 100% veteran run organization. So as I said, Jerry and Jeremy are both uh, retired E7s from the Indiana National Guard. Miranda, our social media coordinator, um, was also in the Army. And then Brian Evans, who is our employment uh, relationship manager, he was a Marine. And uh, oddly enough, he was actually the correspondence manager for the White House. So he's got some pretty sweet stories. So what we do as InVets is we provide that crucial digital connection point from a veteran that's transitioning or just one that's looking to start a new career to really fulfilling careers here in the state of Indiana. So we have over 150 uh, employment partners and numbers really close to 200, if not over that by now. Uh, when you look on our website, you'll see about 30 to 35 of those. And, and part of that is just 
the, uh, the effort of switching to a new website. So as Wes said, it's been about two months and there is a considerable amount of effort on the employer's end to get their uh, portion of our site set up. I know Chris can speak to that as he recently finished his. It's a lot of uh, uploading pictures, putting in content, making sure your Indeed feed's done and things like that. So um, as, as you'll see almost every day, as you log in, there's there's a new couple of employers that are in there. And what what they're able to do is they're able to connect their Indeed feed to InVet's website. So you can apply directly to their open positions from our website. They'll get an email from us saying, hey, this highly qualified veteran just applied to one of their jobs. So what that really does is gives you the opportunity to get your resume uh, up to the top of that stack to help you get in that interview room. Um, so the main industry pathways that we've got here in Indiana, and there, there are way more than four, but the main four are healthcare, logistics, manufacturing, and technology. Um, I believe we're the fifth uh, largest manufacturing state in the country and somewhere in the top 10 for logistics as well. It's one of those things that I don't think people realize, but because of where we're located uh, in the United States being, you know, less than a day's drive from, I, I think, like 75 percent of the country, uh, it's it's a really immense. Okay, I'm back. Uh, sorry about that. So because of where we're located in the country, it makes a lot of sense uh, for those manufacturing and logistics jobs because they're able to make things and ship them out and get them all over the country in a quick manner. Um, so the other thing that we do is we have partnerships with uh, multiple local and national veteran service organizations. To give a really good example of that, our office here in downtown Indianapolis, which is where Wes and I are located right now, um, is in what's called the Veteran Center. So we share this with a few different veteran service organizations, as well as the Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs. So this is a screenshot of our homepage. So you can see right at the top, you can look at the about, you can uh, you know find some stuff about our team. You can look at the different careers, both from an industry and specific company standpoint. You can look at some information about Indiana, which we'll get into here in a minute, and then you can create a profile. So really the way our, our, our network works is when you come into the website, you sign up, you create a profile. Um, from that point forward, somebody from our veteran engagement team is going to reach out to you within 24 to 48 hours. Uh, I know some of you that are on the, the uh, webinar right now have gone through this process. Um, they can speak to what that's like. You know, we kind of really get a feel for what you want to do, where you want to live, um, what type of lifestyle you're looking for and things like that. Then you can go in and, and if they're the position that you're looking for is on the website, you can straight up submit the application from our website. And then when you let us know, we start advocating on your behalf at those companies. So as you're on the site, one of the things that you can do is you can do a lot of the research that you that Wes was talking about, about finding that right career path and that right company without having to go to 15 different websites to try to figure it out. So we kind of break it down by industry for one. And it, within those industries, it kind of gives you an overview of what you what type of works in that industry, median salary, things like that. And then what what growth looks like. And then it looks at the specific uh, jobs that are within that industry. The other thing that it'll do is we are employer pages, which really breaks down a lot of information about the employers. Some some of the employers have posted videos about what it's like to work there. Um, and then they've posted their open positions. So I know that uh, with Bells on the, our website, they have, I believe, 39 open positions in Indiana they're hiring for anything from technicians to uh, sales folks to managers, which once again, they'll be able to give you way more information about that here in a few minutes. So looking at the state as a whole, um, one of the great benefits that we have for veterans here is free or discounted tuition for children of veterans. So. If, you're, if you have a disability rating and you join the military from Indiana, you have um, the ability for your children to be able to go to any state college uh, for free, as well as if you join the military from a different state, but have lived there, lived here for five years since you've gotten out, that benefit's available to you as well. Um, that also uh, extends to any uh, veteran that has received a Purple Heart Medal. 
So House Bill 1010 has been a gigantic uh, win for the veteran community here in Indiana. So what that is, is your military retirement income will be tax free starting on 2022. Right now, that number is starting to lower year over year. This was signed um, two years ago in 2019, or sorry, one year ago, almost a year ago to the day on 2019. It was backdated so that um, every year that tax burden goes down a little bit until January 1 of 2022, where that tax burden completely goes away. So there's no state income tax on your military retirement. We also have property tax deductions. Um, they range, it depends on you know where you're at, how much service you did, the property value of your home and what your disability status is. And then I know uh, Jerry, one of my team members, his favorite one is a, a hunting and fishing licenses that are at a reduced rate. And I think that he says it best and that every dollar that you save on your hunting and fishing license means it's a dollar more you get to spend at Cabela's on more fishing gear. So when we look at the state as a whole, um, different folks and different uh, groups break the state down into regions in different ways. The way we do it is in the five regions. So Northwest, Northeast, Central, Southeast, and Northwest, or Southwest, sorry. Um, so what you're gonna find in all five of these regions is you can either live in the city, the country, or the suburbs and work in one of the other ones and never be more than 30 minute drive away. So if you're in the central region, you know, you could work downtown and live in the suburbs, but have family out in the boondocks and everything's within 30 minutes. So you're not having to drive three, four hours to try to get to places you want to be. So as to what Wes was saying earlier, I mean, if you want to get to a very specific small town like Tipton, Indiana, and you want X job at X salary, like you're really starting to narrow your fields down. But if you start to understand that there's this entire region that within 30 minutes, you can be close to grandma and grandpa in Tipton, you can work in, say, Kokomo, and you could have your favorite thing to do out in, you know, Russiaville or something like that. Everything's within a really close drive. Um, you know, that flexibility is, is really key. And it's kind of like that throughout the regions as well. So, um, well, and one other thing I do want to point out before we bring Chris and David on um, is just our proximity to everything. So the Northwest region, it's right outside of Chicago. Um, we call that the region uh, here in the States. And then the Northeast region, we've got uh, Fort Wayne, which is the second largest city in Indiana. You're a stone's throw away from Ohio, uh, from getting to Toledo. It's only about three, three and a half hours from Detroit. Um, obviously, the central region is where Indianapolis is. It's where you're going to have all your major sporting events. Um, Butler University, uh, IUPUI, the Pacers, the track, all those cool things. And then uh, coming up here in 2021, 2022, we have a ton of events happening. We're hosting the uh, NCAA football national championship. We're hosting a final four. We have the Indy 500. We have the NBA all-star game. Like all of those things are happening, which even if you're not a sports person, there's so many things that happen around those events that it's just a really cool time for anybody that was here in the state when we hosted the Super Bowl. They could really see, you know, it really enhanced the arts community, the education around uh, things and programs for homeless and uh, children and things like that. So those types of events, they, they have an impact much further past sports and it does a really cool economic boom to the uh, local community. Southeast region, you're looking at being real close to Cincinnati and Louisville. You've got some uh, some cool stuff to do down there. You're really going to be able to get some rural living down there. Uh, and then there you've got all your theme parks in Ohio and Kentucky you can get to. You get the Kentucky Derby if that's your fancy. And then the Southwest region, uh, region our executive director is from. We've got Evansville down there right on the border of uh, Illinois and uh, Kentucky. And then you're uh, not very far drive from St. Louis. So, so all that being said, that's Indiana in a nutshell and InVets in a nutshell. If you have any more questions, my email is blaine at invets.org. Um, all of our LinkedIn profiles are over there in the chat. Please uh, add us on LinkedIn. If you have any questions, if you want help with your resume, you're looking for work, jump on the site, create a profile, and we'll reach out and be talking to you. But the reason we're all here today is Bell Tire. So I wanna welcome in Chris Miles, and David Nelson. Uh, Chris is the veteran recruiter for Bell Tire and David Nelson is the director of talent acquisition. So um, as they come on, uh, we'll let them give a quick 
background about themselves, and then they have a presentation. Once the presentation's done, uh, we'll do a quick Q and A, uh, and we'll go from there. So, guys, welcome. Uh, Chris, do you want to start and give us your background? Yeah. Hey, thanks for having us. First, uh, so I did 26 years in the military, retired command sergeant major. Um, six combat tours, uh, basing my career cul culminated in Liberia, Africa for the Ebola outbreak. And then I spent about 10 and a half, 11 years uh, stationed in and out throughout the European theater. Uh, so my transition was a little bit different, and that's what I love about hearing transition stories because uh, we'll go through our own things. So I actually went through the Hire Our Heroes and actually went through, and I was actually an intern for Prudential doing software lifecycle management at Prudential. Uh, thank God to networking and growing and just meeting people throughout the uh, community. I uh, met up with Onward Opportunity. I went through the Certified Associate, Associate Project Management Program. And then I met a, a bunch of individuals at the time from ADP uh, through their uh, military, military network they have within that organization. And so they talked to me and they brought me on as a manager at ADP, uh, where I did that for 16, uh, 16 months, transitioning from small mom and pop core businesses up and through Fortune 500 clientele. Uh, whenever it's interesting when you get there because they said that move to get from where I got would have taken about 10 years. Uh, throughout the interview process, uh, I just finally asked a question at the end. I said, why are you hiring me? I said, I know nothing about what you do. I know nothing about this position. And they said, because you have leadership. And they said, that's something that we can't buy. So they said, if you can come in, just lead people. Uh, we know you can change things around. We definitely did that throughout that time period. And then as I saw that I want to do something uh, further in my career, I saw the opportunity to take and come on board as veteran program manager for Bell Tire. Uh, so I jumped at the opportunity. Uh, so as the program manager for Bell Tire, I travel throughout the uh, United States. I get in contact with veterans and military spouses, and uh, we put them in connection with Bell Tire, and uh, we build out, build out the program. Uh, hopefully you've seen us on LinkedIn and Facebook, and you see where we're going, and you see the growth that we actually have. And with that, I'll turn over to David. Awesome. Good afternoon. Thank you, everyone, for welcoming us today. Uh, my name is David Nelson. I'm, as mentioned, the, the Director of Talent Acquisition, which is just a fancy title for saying I have the awesome job of helping individuals connect with career opportunities at Bell Tire. I've worked for Bell Tire for just about six years now. Uh, and my background before that was also in the, the human resources uh, and retail space as well. So appreciate you giving us the opportunity to talk about my favorite topic, which is <laughs> Bell Tire and career. Tire. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, and then I know you guys have a presentation. So uh, Chris and David, go ahead and take it away. And then at the end of your presentation, we'll do a quick uh, Q&A. Sounds good. So just to give you guys a little background, um, because we are still relatively new to the Indiana market. We've been in business over a hundred years. We got our start in the Metro Detroit area, as you can see on the, the slide in front of you. Uh, we've steadily grown. We still are a family owned company at our core. We're just in the third generation of that family owned company. And over the course of close to that, that hundred year mark, we've steadily grown to now have just right around 125 locations um, and over 2000 employees. Um, and have grown into now the three states in Michigan, Indiana, and Northern Ohio. Um, as you can imagine, based on our, our company name, we are in the tire industry and, and definitely focus on um, offering the, the best tire selection and services that relate to tires. Um, but we also all are a full service automotive repair facility, offering everything from brake work to engine repair to um, pretty much everything bumper to bumper related to automotive repair. And Chris, I don't know if you were gonna touch on um, a little bit more on this topic um, because that's, that's where Chris has really been helping us um, build a strategy to really help us reinforce what we already knew. And that was simply that our veterans that we have as employees genuinely do make us better as a company. Um, so I'll, I'll pass it along to Chris to touch on a little bit further. So the great thing about actually seeing what Bell Tire does and actually going to the stores and visiting is I was actually able to take David to Fort Hood, Texas and actually walk him down through some of our motor pools and actually let him see the size and scope of how we actually operate within the military. 
uh, by seeing those and actually understanding the size of the bays the Bell Tire has, and then actually seeing the scope of what the military actually does, uh, he was able to see that across multiple military occupational specialties that we all do maintenance, that we all specialize, that we actually spend time and the significance of that for if we can't take and move our equipment, uh, we can't move forward. Uh, so in knowing that, uh, we've been very fortunate uh, last year, moving on this year, we've, we've hired hundreds of veterans. Uh, so for, the, for a company that has over 2,000 employees, when we talk hundreds, that's a very significant amount. Uh, we've been recognized for that as well in the state of Michigan for the work we've done with the veteran community up there. And so what we'll continue to take and do uh, as we take and grow larger as a company. All right, so as you take a look at our military community, uh, you'll see, and when I, I just spotlighted three veterans here, Lane, Wayne, and Matt. Uh, I initially want to start with Lane, but I'm going to start with Wayne first um, because it kind of ties in with the story that Wes was just talking about and how, you know, you might not be an Elon Musk, but through time and effort and hard work, you can actually grow quickly within this business. And I think that's kind of what Lane shows that uh, he has done throughout his time at Bell Tire. Uh, but let me talk about Wayne first. So Wayne was a, a captain. He was a civil, civil affairs officer in the United States Army. He's been with Bell Tire for just a little over uh, three years. Uh, when we first made the video, uh, and that just shows you the transition in careers, Wayne was actually a first assistant. So he was you know, right, right in line to take over the store, and now he's actually taking over his own store as a manager. Uh, when you sit down and you talk, take and talk to Wayne, and you can view this through his video on the link that I put on for the Bell Tire military site, he talks about just the camaraderie, the bond, the instant connections to other veterans throughout the organization. He actually likes it whenever he has customers, friends, uh, and just people that he uh, talks to on a daily basis. And that instant connection that you have with those, mil with those military uh, and veterans inside that community. He says coming from being a, civ a civil affairs officer and coming in and actually running a store, it's the same as whenever he was on the civil affairs. You're sitting there talking to somebody on the street. You're in their environment. You're trying to get them to understand they're trying to trust you. Uh, so somebody comes in and has no background about cars, doesn't understand anything about cars, doesn't understand the cost. Wayne's able to sit down, you know, build that rapport, build that trust, and build that instant connection, you know, with that with that uh, customer. And actually, you know, throughout that, you know, just that honest integrity that he shows actually builds a greater connection, just not with that customer, but with the actual community that he actually uh, works in as well. All right, so that's what uh, Wayne loves about it. All right, when when I take and talk about Matt, uh, Matt went a little bit different uh, career path. So Matt is actually a certified auto technician. Uh, he's in the Indiana Army National Guard as a first lieutenant promotable captain. I haven't followed up with him to actually see if he pinned on captain or not. So I guess I'll do that after this call. Uh, but Matt believes that uh, the core value of integrity, honor, respect, uh, those are the same things that he saw in the military as what he sees in Bell Tire. Uh, so just the cultural, just the culture, the way that it's a family atmosphere, uh, no one gets left behind. They take care of everybody inside the shop. If somebody has to take a moment down, if they have to step away, somebody else inside that shop is going to take in assist them, help them with those, with those issues and make sure that the discipline is actually in place so that that shop can continue, continue to grow. Um, the biggest thing when you take and talk to Matt is, you know, just the same motivation that we see in the military. You own your career. If you want to take and blossom in your career, if you want to take and go to that next step, and I'll show you that in the career path that Bell Tires actually laid out, that's upon you, but that's also upon uh, your managers and your leaders to take and help bound you up, to help build you up. Nobody's there to break you down. You know, if you stumble a little bit, it's just kind of like the military. Somebody's there to take and bring you along the way. You know, so he definitely wants to take and push that the pride, sense of accomplishment of the employees is has the drive from Bell, and it's the same thing that he saw in the military. So that's the biggest thing that he sees as far as similarities inside the two. All right. Now, if you notice, the first two that I talked about are both both commissioned officers. The reason why I want to highlight Lane in the bottom is because a lot of the folks, whenever I take a look into the database system, you see a lot of enlisted soldiers that are transitioning out. And they might be thinking, you know what, I might not have the education. Well, sometimes it's just about the experience. Sometimes it's about the drive. And it's about your determination. And, you know, as Wes said, it's about that time and effort that you actually put into that position. All right. So uh, Lane, he's now a store manager. When we built this video, he was actually the uh, first assistant manager at the Columbus Bell Tire location. Uh, he, he's a Lance Corporal in the Marine Corps Reserves. All right. So when I talk about, you know, where, what can you do with your life and how can you grow? This is a young man that's a great testimony to show everybody that's been enlisted at that end that it doesn't matter what your rank is, that you can build up and become whatever you want to take and become. So that's, that's what he's really done. So Lane, Lane and it's so funny when you talk to him because you can see the, see the enthusiasm, just not about the military, but about Bell Tire as well. 
And, you know, I asked him whenever I met him up in Indianapolis, I said, so why'd you join? And we have the one thing in common. He's like, I always wanted to do it as a kid. Uh, so, you know, he went forward and he did it. And, you know, this young man, and you can tell, you know, he's, he talks about being tactful, about being prepared, about being confident. And he exudes all those in the way that he handles himself. So that that's the same thing that he sees inside the military is what he tries to drive into his shop now with belt hire. Um, he loves the fact that everybody has his back um, throughout the entire process and just building those bonds with the family and building with the community. And he said, you know, that store, the way it is, the way it runs, it's up upon him to take and build that relationship with his friends, family, and community uh, that that store is in. So even though it might be, you know, quite a few stores, it's still upon that individual manager and those individual store employees to build up that store. You know, so just to highlight a few things, though, you know, think about the tools that every military branch gives our service members to be successful. You know, they teach us core values, military occupational specialty training, uh, leadership, train management, training discipline, discipline itself, sales training, technical certifications, you know, you name it, endless trade schools, endless training opportunities. You know, the same exists within Belt Hire. You know, it's not like we're just going to take and bring you on board, put you in a position uh, and just give you a job. That is not what this is about. And that is not what the company is about. What we're what we're trying to do is assist you to build you into a successful career. So if you if you plan on transitioning from the military, if you're currently serving, you know, between the resources that you have av available from the military, what the state of Indiana has available for you that you just got off the great briefing from the gentleman there, you know, and with the training that we actually get, you know, I, I can't think of a better company from a veteran perspective when I actually see what they do. You know, you have the skills, you have the abilities, the discipline sacrifices. You've already demonstrated those to your nation. So there's a lot of companies out there, us included, that would definitely love to take and bring you on board. And how we demonstrate that across the nation, uh, we've partnered with the USO Pathfinder program. Uh, so we take in all of our jobs, all of our positions, go out worldwide through the uh, USO Pathfinder. Uh, so all 21 of their scout locations actually help us take and find talent throughout the country. So the same way that uh, Invets is reaching out across the country to those uh, veterans, we're doing the same thing and trying to bring them in, into our locations, especially Indiana. Great state. You know, my time in Indianapolis, I've only been there four or five times, but I love it every single time that I've been up there. We also partner with Soldier for Life. That way, every single service member that's transitioning, we do a lot of that uh, down here at Fort Bliss and up at uh, Fort Hood, Texas. And we take and we try and do about 43 engagements a year where we actually set up tables, talk to all the folks as they're going through their, their uh, transitioning programs and have that time and opportunity just to explain, you know, what they really need to take and do and how to transition. And then we take and go with the uh, Institute for Veterans and Military Families, which is, which is the Onward Opportunity Program. We go out, we speak, we engage, and we take and uh, we're intertwined with them throughout the uh, uh, United States as well. And we've done mu multiple other events just to be able to take in one, help veterans, put the name out there for the company, and to take and bring that talent on board. So that's really what, uh, that's really what we're trying to do. So, you know, Hopefully, by the end of this presentation, uh, we'll have you guys ready to go. All right, let me move on to the next slide. All right, so I know David alluded to a little, a little bit ago, but these are our feature opportunities that Belt Hire hires, hires for. Now, these aren't all the opportunities, as in any other uh, company that's out there. You know, we also have HR. We also have district managers, regional managers. We have all those other jobs. But these are the, you know, you can call them the gateway jobs. And when, when you actually sit down, you look at our career paths, uh, you'll see how these tie into our career paths and can actually show you how you can take and start at day one and then walk away at day, you know, year 30, year 35, and you've had a success, successful career. All right. So you'll see the tire technician, auto technician, alignment technician, sales associate, which is your first step to take and going into assistant manager, manager, delivery drivers, auto glass install technician, and warehouse associates. A lot of these jobs, if you look at them, uh, if you want to take and say sales associate, Sales associate would be a team leader inside the military. Your alignment technician would be your TC inside the military because, you know, you know enough about the vehicle, but you know enough to be dangerous, you know, where you still have to have some folks underneath you and have some certifications underneath your belt to move along. And then if you take a look at the auto technicians, more of a highly skilled, more experienced. A lot of guys have a technical school background, ASC certifications. Uh, but those are really the future opportunities that you'll see most of the time in the state of uh, Indiana. David. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Um, as far as overall benefits that we offer, just wanted to call out that we support reserve training commitments. Um, our managers are very flexible from a scheduling standpoint. 
Um, and there is paid time off available after 90 days that could be utilized to um, support that, that time off that's needed. Um, as far as starting pay, um, depending on the position, um, it's go going to be different, uh, but we consider ourselves to be very competitive uh, to what you would find in the industry. We're going to touch on and spend some time in the, the following slides talking about exactly what some of the training develop development programs will look like by position. Uh, but we very much are focused on our career paths. Um, very important that individuals coming into uh, a company like Bell Tire, that a lot of the times people um, think that they require years and years of experience in the industry. And while that's true, some of our positions do, there's many that do not. And because we're an industry that more and more, uh, you just don't see candidates and individuals going into automotive repair like you used to, we've learned that we need to provide a program that helps to develop individuals that don't have prior experience and give them the tools and skills needed in order to have um, success in those more experienced positions. Like I touched on, we do have a paid time off program after 90 days. Um, and because we feel so strongly about um, the level of talent of our team and how they will most likely know other talented individuals, we offer a very lucrative referral bonus. Um, you have the ability to participate in a 401k uh, after 90 days, and there is a company match associated with that. In addition to that, there's the standard benefits package that would exist with a full-time position, including everything from medical, dental, vision, and other um, insurance options, including life insurance, disability, um, et cetera. Um, and then of course, since we are in the automotive repair business, there's discounts on not only the products that we offer, but also the services. Sorry, my speaker wasn't on. And I just wanna highlight uh, just a couple last things for those who uh, can you take and serve inside the National Guard and the reserves. You know, the flexibility to serve, you know, the job, the position, the flexibility, you know, we're gonna be there to take and back you up, you know, because that's what, we know that that's what we're getting with a veteran in the military. Uh, same thing, spouse employment. You know, if you have a military spouse that's aspiring for a career, you know, if we have a career set, if we have a job, if we have anything that's aligned that uh, they want to take and get into, but then by all means, that's really what we're looking for, that engagement piece. Uh, training, uh, support your reserve commitments as as we've stated, and then job protection. You know, if you do have to walk away uh, for a deployment, you know, we're going to be there for you. We're going to back you up. We're going to stay in touch. We're going to make sure that we're shipping out those care packages to you and then we're taking looking after you and your family while they're while you are gone taking serving the country. All right. So we talked earlier about the uh, career pass. So you'll see this is really the initial uh, you know career path for a tire tech. You know, so if you just think you're going to walk in, you know, obviously there's going to be some training just like the military. So if you want to take a look at level one through level three, Bravo. What's great about this is just imagine level one is an E1, level two and E2. You know, level three and E3, level three B and E4. And then the tire tech trainer, that's right as you're looking to go in between, you know, E4 up to a non-commissioned officer. Like, we know you have that talent. We know you have this skill set. So you're a trainer right now. So then maybe after you become a trainer, maybe your next, maybe the next thing that you move on to, if you don't want to take and stay in the mechanical side and go up to an alignment tech, is maybe you go to sales because now you're the subject matter expert for what happens behind the scenes in the shop and knows how to take and interact with customers. So that's really what this career path is actually showing you. And I think what's great about this is, you know, Belt Hire has actually went to these lengths to actually show you the breakdown, to show you the responsibility level and to say, hey, this is what it takes. If you go through this career path, you know, it might not take you two or three years. It might take you six months, depending upon your level of expertise, depending upon your time and effort, you know, depending upon if you want to be Elon Musk or not. You know, it's really up to you on how you actually take and pursue and get through this career path. You know, when you take a look at the alignment and the auto tech career path, you know, so say that you come on board as an alignment tech, you know, trainee, your alignment technician, your auto technician trainee, but you'll see in a lot of these, that's when we take and start talking about, you know, being partnered, having an ASE certification. You know, did you spend any time in a tech school? Are you doing anything, you know, as far as to take and build yourself out individually to grow inside your career set? And that's where, you know, a lot of us have to take ownership in our transition plan and say, okay, you know, I have the skill set in the military, but how am I going to take and build this up as I get out? You know, we'll give you that flexibility. If you say, hey, you know, I'm going to school on these nights or I'm going to schools on these days, 
you know, we'll work around that schedule, especially if you're going after those certifications, we'll work with you to be able to take and do those, you know, so, you know, the auto technicians, and I know as I get done on the next slide, I know David will have some highlighted comments, but I'm telling you, some of these are very lucrative careers where you can actually make very, very good money uh, inside, inside working with Bell Tire. And then remember something, when you take a look at our tire tech training technicians, our auto technicians, then we actually have individuals that are actually the master trainers for, uh, for the company. You know, so, you know, just keep those in mind. There are further jobs. And then here's the, here's the last career path side. So this shows the sales manager career path. You know, you'll see starting as a sales associate, become that subject matter expert on everything behind the scenes, everything about what we've taken offer inside the business, and then moving on to the different assistant manager through manager roles from being a key holder to actually, you know, going up and through the second, first assistant managers. We're now sitting down doing interviews, hiring people, you know, engaging and helping build up those next level employees. So that's more of where this is more of the career path where you start looking at it. You know what? I now see the non-commissioned officers. I see the officers. I see the buildup and I see the growth. So the whole way of the culmination, you know, inside this career path is being the actual store manager, you know, running the human resources, the customer sales and services and driving production for that store. David, do you have any comments? No, I think you touched on it perfectly. Um, it just goes back to what I mentioned in the beginning, the importance of being able to start with someone that has no experience in the industry and really by applying themselves taking the training that's available and with a little hard work, they're able to really advance really quickly in whichever career path they see themselves fitting in. So these are the current opportunities that we actually have inside the, uh, inside the state of Indiana. And you'll see a lot of these, obviously you're going to see a lot of the hubs around Indianapolis, uh, Terre Haute, uh, Fort Wayne area, but we also have other locations along main, main route corridors throughout the state. So you'll see those as well. You know, so if you see the positions out there, but you still don't see something and you'll see it on our last slide, there's actually a talent network slide. If you go to the talent network, you can actually take an apply for that and it'll actually give you everything updated. Inside the InVet site, I'm trying to keep everything updated. Um, I'm trying to work through the technology side with that team and they did an awesome job, help us get stand up right away because we had some other growth that we're trying to do inside the state. So I just want to appreciate the partnership there. But I uh, just reach out, you know, if you're not sure what you're qualified for, we're going to sit down, we're going to talk with you. You know, if you just want to sit down, go talk to a rep at a store, go talk to one of the system managers, go talk to one of the managers and have that conversation with them to find out, one, are we the right fit for you? Because I would hate for you to come in, start a career field to realize, you know, 30, 60 days down the road that that's not what you want, you know, and then we can take and help build you up. If you're not sure what experience level, what education level you're at, let us help you take and build that out as well. All right. And so then our final slide, you know, this, like I said, this is where you can take and actually go down and join our talent network. You know, I hope that everybody goes online. You know, we actually have three videos that will take you straight to YouTube and you can actually see the testimonials uh, from three of the veterans that are actually there. And, you know, you can actually go to the stores inside the state of Indiana. You can actually go talk to those managers, you know, engage with those guys. Uh, and a lot of times when we have events in Indianapolis, you're probably going to see Lane out there with me uh, talking on the room. All right. So hey, I apologize, David had a battery issue, so he probably just dropped out. So if that happened, I apologize. Um, but you know, as we take a look at what we're trying to do, we're trying to grow our legacy. You know, we're trying to build a brand, a national brand with heart. Um, and really we're just looking for more people to take and come on board with us. We're gonna already expand stores. Uh, so there's definitely a lot of room. So if you're trying to figure out if this is a career path for you, realize you might get on board now and we might ask you within a year, two years, hey, we need you to step into an assistant manager role. We need you to step, step, we need you to step into a store manager role because that's how fast we're growing right now and that's how fast we plan on moving up. So if you look at uh, the belltireskareer.com site, uh, we're on Facebook, we're on Indeed, and we're on LinkedIn. Uh, so feel free to take a look at any of those uh, areas. Feel free to look at any of those positions. And uh, I already put my LinkedIn in the comments. So please, you know, if you have any questions, uh, reach out to us. All right, thanks guys. Hey, that was awesome. And uh, I think, from, from what we've seen from an applicability from the military to a civilian job, I, I don't think I've seen a better presentation of this is exactly how, you know, a career path looks and how similar it is to a career in the military. Because uh, just like you guys have your skill level one, two, three, alpha, three, bravo. Um, I mean, those are the skill levels that we see in the army uh, as well as you kind of progress right. through this is what it is expected of you as a as a skill level one 
this is what's expected of you, you know, all the way up through your skill level uh, seven or four, sorry, as a platoon sergeant. Um, so uh, I think that that's fantastic. And what you guys have done, it, I mean, it really, uh, as we say in the army, it, it breaks down color crayon style so that it's really easy to understand. It's really easy to see, like, this is where I could fit in uh, with the organization. Um, go ahead. No, and it's great, you know, and David, he's, he did a lot of work to take and get this, the veterans program moving. Bell Tire has always been hiring veterans, uh, but just in the last years where we start actually tracking the veteran progress, seeing where we're going, building up the program and making sure that, you know, and we're doubling what the national average says that a military friendly company should be. We're already double past that effort right now. And we see a lot of growth. We see a lot of room for improvement. And I, I'm telling you right now, Indiana, you know, and I'll share the numbers with you later. When you actually look at the state of Indiana, just our assistant managers and store managers, that it's a lot of our positions. That's what we're getting a lot of our candidates into. So, you know, even those folks who are bringing other folks over from the National Guard and Reserves, and they're coming on board now as tire techs. So that's really going to be our next round of managers and assistant managers is going to come out of that growth and development. And you guys, your open positions are on our website as well at this point now? Yes, sir. Okay. That's what I thought. I, I knew that we were close to finishing that. Um, and, and like I said earlier, uh, Chris can attest to that, that large level of effort that comes from the employer side to make sure that things are copacetic on our website. It's uh it's not just a check a box and everything's good. <laughs> so, um, so I, I just have one question as, as we kind of wrap up uh, from your perspective, from, from somebody that went all the way through, 26 years in the military uh, as a sergeant major and made the transition. What's the number one piece of advice that you would give to a veteran that's about to transition out of the military? A lot of people will think that once they transition that they're kind of done, like somebody owes them something. You have to work harder in that first three to five years um, than you did your entire military career. I'm sorry, I get a little bit of feedback, but but, so, but if you really look at it, you know, and you guys are a great organization to do it, you know, there's tons of them out there. You have to network. You have to understand what is out there. And there's a, where we're, where we're different is, you know, yes, I'm, I'm a veteran recruiter, but when I sit down with a veteran, I look at the resume and you apply for a job, I'm making sure that app, that application gets in front of a hiring manager. They're going to sit down, they're going to take a look at it. We're going to have a conversation, you know, so you just went past that entire stack. You know, it's great what I hear you guys saying. I think the stories are great. I think the sharing is great. Um, but what I would tell you is share with other people that are still in service, share with other people in the reserves and National Guard, and you need to start transitioning from day one. Day one, you start the military, or, or day now, start planning your transition. You know, even if you have a job right now, what is that next move? What is that next step? Because when you don't do that, you've really stagnated your own career and your, your own growth. Yeah, thank you. And that's that's really great advice. Um, so I want to, you know, as we wrap up once again, thank you guys so much for for joining us and, and highlighting your organization. I think that what you guys are doing for veterans, uh, not only here in Indiana, but across all of your is fantastic. Um, I want to bring Wes back on um, just to kind of wrap things up. But once again, thank you guys so much. Um, looking forward to passing some veterans on to you as they come through our network. And uh, if anybody is in, is in the chat or in the room right now or watching the replay, uh, go on our website, check out belltire.com. I believe replay att attendees will have access to the chat with all of the LinkedIn uh, profiles and things like that. But then uh, you can see here on this slide what all those links are as well. So, uh, Wes. Yeah, thanks. I think the, the one last thing I would add um, is that given COVID and the fact that that a lot of the transition assistance programs are operating operating in somewhat of a limited capacity, uh, there's a lot of folks that are getting out of the military right now that aren't getting the normal amount of assistance that they would have gotten, you know, let's say six months ago. So I think it's um, it's up to us that are that are in a position to help. You know, everybody that's watching this included to try and make sure that you know our uh, brothers and sisters that might be getting out at this point are aware of all these different resources and and are making sure they actually plug in and making sure they aren't just checking the box and going to that virtual event with the TAP program 
um, and, and kicking this can down the road. So I just encourage everybody to reach out to a couple people that they know are getting out over the next, you know, even six months um, and really make sure that that they're plugging in. Uh, and, and again, you know, thank you to the Bell, Bell Tire team for, for working with us, for, uh, for partnering with us as an organization, not only just today, um, and hopefully we can, uh, we can help you connect with some people. So thanks everybody for joining, um, and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody.